a very warm, warm welcome and thank you for watching Times TV. Welcome to Times Exclusive with me, Wesi Kasambala. This week, I'm joined by Credit Data Managing Director Patricia Mwasi. She's not, not been a stranger to the media and certainly not a stranger to controversy. She fought very hard um, for something that a lot of people perhaps don't really understand, and that is the concept um, of credit and indeed credit referencing. So we've got her here today in the hot seat to answer a number of questions and also perhaps to allay some viewers and listeners' fears as to what it actually means to have a credit reference bureau. Does it mean you've been blacklisted? Does it mean credit is something to be scared of? We want her to answer all these questions. The fact that she sued a number of quarters, um, all in a fight to make sure that this particular um, act was actually amended in 2015. Thank you so much for joining us, Patricia. Um, as I said in the intro, so you're certainly no stranger to controversy. Um, <laughs> over the last few years, um, you've taken a number of quarters on, head on, um, all in a bid to fight for what you believed in, and that is yeah. the idea um, of having a credit referencing system and a credit reference bureau. Mm -hmm. But I think before we do that, I think we need to understand um, why you did this in the first place. What prompted you? Um, to decide to open up or run a credit reference bureau. Where did that come from? Well, uh, thank you very much, Wesley. Uh, first of all, um, I, I am a, a, a banker. I trained in banking, um, and I was working for a bank. As I was, um, I was studying with Chartered Institute of Bankers uh, UK. So in the in the in, in my studies, um, actually I was reading an accounting book. It was not read about credit, but it was an accounting book, and there was only one line in that book that said in UK they've got reference credit reference agencies. Mm -hmm. That caught my eye. I was like, int interesting, what are they? Mm -hmm. uh, but it was only one line. Uh, they said this is where people uh, refer before they give out credit. Yes. It, it was quite interesting for me because I, I was working in the bank. Mm. The next morning I went to my, to my manager. I had a very good manager uh, uh, who I went and asked to say, listen, I read in, my, in the book that the, in the UK there are credit reference agencies. Do we have them in Malawi? Mm -hmm. And then he said, no, we don't have. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, fine. At that point, did we have any anywhere in Africa? I, w I wasn't sure. Right. That time I, I, that time I didn't know. Mm. And that was a long time ago uh, because this, this idea, I hatched it like almost 20 years ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure. So anyway, um, when I noticed that um, I, in, during my work, I, I said, one day I'm going to open a credit transition. So it has been a dream. And, um, but why? What I, well, I think what I'm interested to know is why did you feel the need to do so? I mean, given that even then, Malawi's economy was relatively small anyway, it still mm. is today. Mm. Why did you feel that there was a need for Malawi to follow in those same footsteps as perhaps the United Kingdom? What, what, what gaps did you, did you see? By then, I, okay, I, I didn't see any gaps, mm. but it just interested me. Okay. But when I went to, then, because in the banking, you, are cha you change departments. Yes. And then I was changed to a department that deals in credit. Okay. We, uh, like in that bank, we, we used to call it manager's department. Mm. So when I was in that department, yeah, that's when I noticed that in, in Malawi, there is that need. There was a credit information gap because mm. I was in that department collecting, giving out loans, assisting the manager to give, it, to give out loans. Mm. But then we lacked information. Then it just com confirmed or vindicated the idea that, that we Malawi should have credit reference mm -hmm. uh, agencies, credit reference bureaus. Right. So that's why I had the, the idea. Mm. Yeah, so when I went out of the banking system, uh, uh, then that's when I said this is the time for me to, to, to start a credit reference uh, uh, agency. And when was this? When, when did you decide that that's it, you're now actually going to set up? When was that? Uh, well, it was in 2003. Actually, it was, it mm. was I, I wouldn't say I decided that I want to, to, to go out of the banking system and start mm. a credit reference bureau. Actually, mm. I was fired. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was fired from because I had changed shops. Mm. So when I went to another bank, I'm glad you've been very candid about that. Yeah, sure. Mm. Yeah, I mean, mm. I, ha I have to be honest about mm. it. Yeah. So I went to another bank. It just worked uh, when I worked for a year, just a year. I was fired. Right. And yeah, but then I took that bank to court. So when you got a case in court, okay, you ca so no you have a history of taking um, institutions <laughs> to court. <laughs> Is that safe to say? 
Um, uh, is, is that is that always your your joker, your weapon? Uh, no, no, no. People to court? No, ways. You are Malawian. I am mm. a Malawian, right? Yes. The laws when they are passed in Parliament, mm. they are to be used by Malawians. Yes. All right. They are right. not supposed to be used by anybody else, but Malawians. And mm. I, because I am a bona fide Malawian, I have. So to you use make the it. most of the of the laws. Yes, mm. I do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because I had sold this bank, uh, no bank could not take me to, to work until this issue had been cleared. So, but right. you know, yeah, you, now you know how, how long it takes sometimes to get uh, judgments out yes. there. Mm. That me that meant I had to stay at home. So okay. no one would hire you no. until this issue had been resolved. Exactly, exactly. Wow. Yeah, that, that that's the norm. That's the norm mm. in the financial industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, until you are cleared, yeah. that's when you can go and and work in a, in another financial institution. Okay. But then uh, I said, you know what? Maybe this is the time. This is a message for me mm -hmm. to start my credit friends, the credit friends bureau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I started in two thousand and four. Okay. okay. Yeah, as a sole proprietorship, mm -hmm. uh, and while I was waiting for the for the for the court case, and um, just studied the market. I was told that you know you can't immediately start the credit defense bureau because in Malawi the the market is not ready. What you should do mm -hmm. is you should start doing debt collection. So I yeah. said, okay, fine. I still don't want to to lose out my the the, 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 the dream of the credit defense bureau. Mm -hmm. uh, but I and then I started the debt collection. The debt collection is the one that was almost like a kind of. Uh, welcomed by the by the industry yeah. but uh, sadly uh, just i think a few months into the debt collection uh, when we we're trying to collect some dates um, i got a call uh, i think it was by then the president of malawi law society telling me that you can't do debt collection debt collection is only for lawyers and i said what doesn't right. make sense mm. because this is this is debt collection is um, it's a financial issue. Yeah, it's not a legal right. issue. So mm. why should it be confined? Perhaps to I would students? understand if mm. it was um, um, a joint effort between the legal professionals as yes, well as the financial professionals. Yeah, but, but they were saying exclusively legal professionals. Exactly. Right. So I said, no, that doesn't make sense. Right. And uh, I tried to check with one or two lawyers. I said, yeah, but they, you know, lawyers always have different opinions mm -hmm. to the interpretation. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the then attorney uh, general. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, and then surprisingly, the attorney, the then attorney general, um, the answer that he gave me was like, close down, close down. And I'm like, no, I can't. I'm sorry. I am a Malawian. Mm -hmm. And the constitution, I think it must be section 46, says mm -hmm. every Malawian has got a right to economic activity. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that. That's when I went to court. I right. said, I, I want a good interpretation of this law. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, that's the, and so, now, uh, so at this stage, you now went up against the attorney general. Malawi Law Society. Malawi it was Malawi Society. Society. Yes, it was Malawi Law Society. Yeah. So I had eleven lawyers on the other side, mm -hmm. and me and my one lawyer on on the other side, and then I was also advised, no, you know, it's going to take long for the judgment to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay. The best we can do, just go to Parliament. And they were made the, 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 the law, mm -hmm. you know. So you were encouraged to lobby. Yes, to, to lobby. Yes, change. yes. Right. So I lobbied, and I, I found the uh, honourable uh, Bire Kaunda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I asked him. I explained the issues to say, can you please go to Parliament and ask for the amendment? Well, it took us a long time. It took us a long time, rather. But uh, apparently, yes, it was it was amended. Mm -hmm. uh, the Malawi Parliament passed that. Yes, Malawi. I mean, the, this act should be amended. Okay. Yeah. And that was twenty. That was, uh, no, I forgot, it must have been 20, 2007, but this okay. was now about the debt collection, okay. yeah, but you remember, mm -hmm. the dream was Credit Reference Bureau, mm. right, but there was no law in Malawi. Let me ask you this, Patricia, mm. again, mm. and I think it goes back to the qu initial question I asked you, mm. why were you so passionate about the Credit Reference Bureau? <laughs> what was your agenda? You must have had a vision, you must have had an idea or uh, a direction that you wanted to take, and because and, and, and that would have been what gave you such a strong conviction. You didn't want to go into data collection. Mm. You wanted credit. Why? What well, what was your <laughs> what was your goal? Well honestly I honestly that was I can't I can't really pinpoint. I think mm. he, it must be God. Be, mm. God must have said this is this it must be this woman who must do this. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I really I can't tell you the exact why the, the, I had to be, I mean, I had to be passionate to make mm. sure that the Credit Defense Bureau is, is on. Mm. Yeah, sure. So, like I said, uh, the Credit Defense Bureau is also not regulated. Yes. Yeah? yeah. But I was then, uh, we were doing the debt collection and other of you. Fortunately, uh, the, the, the now president, uh, Professor Thabita Mutarika, uh, became the Minister of Justice. He was coming from America, where the Credit Defense Bureau is... Uh, uh, very operational. Mm -hmm. So when he came in, he said, I would like to, you know, we should have a credit defense bureau in Malawi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
he made sure that the act was was drafted that um, it should be passed in parliament that we, Malawi should have credit reference bureaus and in 2010 indeed i i saw uh, uh, the finance minister taking the act into parliament wow uh, and, and that, that must have been quite a milestone for you oh yeah and sure oh, honestly i was i was very happy i was over the moon honestly i i just couldn't believe it mm. i that uh, now it's happening okay mm. now let's um because i want us to quickly mm. to to sort of uh, progress here mm. in terms of the idea mm. i think for the benefit of malawians and viewers and mm. indeed our listeners at home mm -hmm. you really need to explain as quickly as you can what the idea of credit okay we all know i mean a lot of people know what credit is but the idea of a credit reference agency credit referencing what does it mean yeah um, i think and, and i think you should put to bed yes. a lot of the misconceptions mm, that are perhaps mm. out there yeah sure actually many malawians they don't know what a credit reference bureau is yeah. a credit reference bureau is a company that collects credit information okay mm -hmm. we, we are given credit information both positive and negative when mm -hmm. i talk of positive credit information that means you've got a loan mm -hmm. okay and you are repaying well you're and good yes yeah, so yeah you're servicing it so that's a positive credit information mm -hmm. but when you've got a loan and you are not servicing it, that's mm -hmm. negative information but us as a credit reference bureau we are supposed to collect yeah. both mm -hmm. that i mean th that information right okay and then when we collect that information you want to go and borrow elsewhere mm -hmm. that institution should ask from mm -hmm. us uh, your report mm -hmm. to check your credit worthiness. Okay. As so that's, as that. so that, that's, the, that's the point. Uh, yes. I think people need to understand that. The idea is mm -hmm. to be able to reduce the risk for the financial institution. So they have a pic clear picture mm -hmm. of who yes. they're dealing with, yeah, exactly. whether they have the capacity to yeah. pay back, yes. whether there'll be a problem in the future or yeah, not. Exactly. That is the principle. Yes. But um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you've talked about how it has two there's two prongs to this. It's mm. either negative or positive information. Yes, yes. Now, a lot of Malawians, um, indeed, we are all concerned about the negative information, naturally. Mm -hmm. And there's a misconception that perhaps it's a blacklisting um, uh, institution or facility. So once uh, that you're just going to permanently blacklist people. Now, can you <laughs> respond to those sentiments? Because that is what Malawians uh, fear. No, a credit reference bureau is not a blacklisting agency. Actually, a credit reference bureau is very, very beneficial uh, uh, to the... I'll, I'll talk about an individual. You as an individual, if you have your information at the credit reference bureau and the, the, the records are that you're, they are positive, right, you've got, you can use it as an asset. You can go, you can walk in in a bank, mm. you can walk in in a shop. Mm. It's unfortunate that in Malawi, the private sector has not embraced the credit reference bureaus uh, because in other countries where they do use credit cards, mm -hmm. right, you can go and get anything you want, mm. you know, um, mm -hmm. on credit, okay, mm -hmm. as long as your credit record is good, mm -hmm. okay. So you can't say that that's bad. That's actually good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in, in terms of the economy, uh, I mean, for the businesses, yeah, you find that... Um, like you've already said, a business can actually now have the confidence to say, I'm giving out this amount mm -hmm. to, 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 to this institution or to this person, and I know I'm going to get back my, my, my money. Mm -hmm. yeah? you, you might find that some institutions, because of this cash, mm -hmm. dealing in cash, they've got less customers. Yeah. 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 But if you you allow credit, you can get and you you know you are lending to mm. the people that are worth it. I mean, they are going to pay back. You can you can increase your customer base. Mm. Yeah. Now, do mm. you have um, in other parts of the world, for example, the United Kingdom, they literally use a credit score. Mm. Is that the same principle that you're applying here? No, in my are you just giving different individuals a score depending on how high the risk is to, to lend to them mm. or how low the risk is? Because that's how it works in other parts of the world. No, how are you doing it here? No, at the moment we're not doing any scoring, okay? Scoring is also mm. a different a different mm -hmm. uh, service altogether. So how are you uh, applying this? We're just giving all the information. We've been given the And leaving it up to the institution to, to, to use yes, their discretion. To, yes, know who you're dealing with. That's our slogan. So they should know who they're dealing with. When they look at the report, they'll be saying, okay, mm -hmm. listen, this is high risk, or maybe this mm -hmm. is low risk. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. okay, how do we know that you're not um, perhaps using our information for perhaps um, rather unsavory purposes? That is what Malawians are also concerned about. How do we know what you're doing with our data? What would you do with your data? Because anyway? that's what that's what Malawians are worried about. <laughs> uh, no, mm. won't do anything with anybody's data. You know, we I mean, like at the moment, at the credit data, we are sitting on over two point something million records. Mm. Mm -hmm. What would you do with that data? Mm -hmm. uh, we, the only time that this data we it's being taken to the to the to the industry is when they have asked for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you're aware that the law that was passed in twenty I mean the amendment uh, that was done in twenty fifteen, my, my, my parliament, now says no bank 
should give out a loan without mm -hmm. checking with the credit reference bureau. Mm -hmm. Okay, so banks. So uh, now it's uh, mandatory. It's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it, as long as it's a financial, so not only banks but mm -hmm. financial institutions, microfinance. We're talking of microfinances, uh, cooperatives. Mm -hmm. They are not supposed to give out loan without checking with the credit reference bureau. Mm -hmm. So. These are the, this is the only time we give out the information, but mm. otherwise... If they actually request it from you. Yeah, exactly. But again, it seems like it's up to them. So uh, just in theory, presumably some institutions might choose not to ask you for that information. And you would never know that's the case, right? No, we wouldn't know. But, mm. uh, you know, financial institutions are regulated by the central bank. Mm. Okay, and it's the duty of the central bank mm -hmm. to make sure, to check that these institutions are complying. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the law has to be complied. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, so. where are you, um, I think that brings me nicely to my next question. Mm -hmm. How are you storing uh, this data? Because, again, I keep saying that is probably what a lot of people are concerned about, how you're storing it, how safe is our <laughs> information. Like I said, you know, in other parts of the world, there's very clear guidelines and policies in place. Like, for example, in the UK, they have the um, Data Protection Act, mm -hmm. which makes it very, very clear mm -hmm. how anybody in, in um, any kind of, uh, how can I put it, uh, lending institution should handle mm -hmm. sensitive information, whether it's names, um, addresses, etc. Mm. You cannot just divulge that information. Mm. What guidelines are you using to, 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 to keep these records? What, what is policing you? The Credit Repairs Bureau Act. That right. was yeah. Okay. That was passed in 2010, mm -hmm. and then it was amended in 2015. Right. Right. And we are also licensed. By the way, there are only two credit reference bureaus in Malawi. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Credit Data is the only Malawian credit reference bureau. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we are regulated by the Reserve Bank of Malawi. Before they give us the license, they check all the processes, and even for for your own information, even the members of staff that work in our in in, in the bureau, mm -hmm. they are vetted by the central bank. Mm -hmm. You don't just take each, I mean, every gym and jag and say you come and work at the bureau. No, mm -hmm. they are vetted by the central bank. The, those are the processes to make sure that the data that we are keeping, one, the processes are safe, but also even the, the way we are handling the data is safe. Okay. Yeah, sure. Now, Patricia, um, it's all well and good having a credit reference bureau or credit reference agency um, but that can only work um, in an economy that is perhaps um, sufficient enough to sustain that in your view um, obviously you're a banking professional yourself do you still feel and stand by um, the fact that Malawi indeed has the capacity the spending power the borrowing power to to justify the existence of these credit reference bureaus or agencies do we have that borrowing capacity uh, yes. When you when you assess, because at the end of the day, it's only a very tiny, negligible proportion of Malawians <laughs> who even have the capacity to borrow, and I'm sure you know that better than I do. Yeah, sure. I mean, I this makes me. On, of course, this mm. kind of con me, uh, conceptions to say mm. Malawi doesn't have the capacity and all that makes me mm. sad, honestly. Mm. Okay, um, we've got the capacity. We can do it. We can be there. We can mm -hmm. reach to the point like where people are able to say credit is the norm of the day, right? Let's look at Rwanda. Rwanda is got the population is nine million. Mm -hmm. Malawi is eighteen million. Mm -hmm. And you tell me, we've got no, Rwanda. but there's a difference there, Patricia. Because <laughs> yes. um, Rwanda, in terms of economic economic activity, is far beyond and as far ahead Why? of Malawi. Um, we are we are behind. So the point I'm trying <laughs> to make is: is our economy um, big enough um, to to justify this? Do we even we don't have borrowing power? Per se, it's a very small proportion of Malawians. What are the statistics, if we I may ask you? Do you have them to, to hand? In terms of how the percentage of Malawians who mm -hmm. um, are bankable, that's number one, mm -hmm. and not just bankable, have the capacity to borrow. Yeah. I think it's tiny. Well, uh, the last I checked, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the bankable, I think mm -hmm. it must have been at 34, and then mm -hmm. I think it's... And, yeah, then, and then, the then it's going to 55, I think, uh, because mm -hmm. there is a financial, I mean, financial inclusion strategy that was launched mm. by the Malawian government wants to take it to 55. Right. I don't know whether the figures are still the same. Okay. And uh, like the last time I also checked, the borrowing uh, yeah. penetration was, I think, was at 4%, if I'm not mistaken, okay. on, on that one. See how it's small that is. Yeah, but then we, we, should go, we should be looking at going towards increasing that. Mm -hmm. Because if we say Malawi is small, Malawi cannot do this, Malawi mm -hmm. cannot do that, then when are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. And who is going to do this? We are Malawians. We are in this country. We have to do it. So your, job, your, yeah. your, your principle is, regardless of how small the numbers are, mm -hmm. even those numbers mm -hmm. should be vetted. Basically. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Yes. Even even a tiny percentage of Malawians, whoever, whatever the numbers are that are borrowing, they need to be vetted and checked too. That's what you're saying. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But we're, I'm also not saying the only those ones that are borrowing. No, mm. we have to bring in now new borrowers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So how is this new? How has this new act, which was amended in 2015, mm -hmm. how what what has been 
the um, tangible benefits? What is that has the impact been? Has it had an impact? Has it helped? In yes, any way? very, very. How very. has it done that? Uh, uh, I'll talk on in terms of the in, on in the in, in the institutions. I think you must have heard uh, several months ago. Uh, people like uh, um, the executive director of. Um, higher education, the investor higher education, he mentioned quite a lot about credit defense bureaus help, ha having helped them to recover quite a lot of debts, right? right? And okay. when, because they've called it, they recovered quite a lot of um, amounts that they wouldn't have recovered. Now, they've, at least they increased their funding, I mean, their, 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 what, their pocket mm -hmm. where they keep their money, mm -hmm. and they're able to bring in to more students, mm -hmm. okay, to access the loans, and we are educating more. Mm -hmm. This is about because the credit defense bureau is here. Mm -hmm. That's one. And on the second issue, and the, is, uh, the number of people that maybe they wouldn't have even gotten a loan from a bank because the bank was saying we don't know you and all that, all those things. But now mm -hmm. because there is a credit defense bureau, they've been able to check their records and they say the record is good. Mm -hmm. They're able to now borrow, mm -hmm. right? And then many people are now accessing loans. But also on the other hand, Malawi as a country. Um, I am a contributor. I, I, I am a contributor to the doing business by the World Bank. Okay, uh, so we, when we we gave out the information that they, now we are fully operational, Malawi. I'm sure you, um, you might have checked. You might have heard that Malawi moved from one. I think 135. Now it's at 123 in doing business ranking. So when you when the country is doing good in terms of doing business ranking, it attracts investors. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So it has helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has helped all through and through. Okay. Yeah. We're going to need to take a short break, uh, Patricia. When okay. we come back, we'll, of course, continue this discussion. Thank you. Um, today, you're watching Times Exclusive with me, Wesley Kasambala. And this week, I'm talking to Patricia Mwase, who is the Managing Director of Credit Data, which is a credit referencing agency. Um, a relatively new concept to Malawi, uh, but it's basically an agency that provides um, credit information to lending institutions on whether perhaps you are a good uh, borrower or perhaps not so good borrower and then it's up to the lending institutions to make a determination as to whether they want to continue um, or give you credit or not but we'll be right back after this break welcome back you're watching times exclusive right here on times tv i'm wesley kasambala today i'm talking to credit data managing director patricia mwase um, who's been very very instrumental in pushing for the credit reference bureau or crb act uh, which was uh, recently amended in 2015 and one of the provisions in there is, of course, um, well, it's attempted to make it mandatory for lending institutions to make sure they do some kind of a vetting process in order to assess the credit worthiness of any potential consumer or client. Patricia um, was obviously at the forefront of pushing for this to happen. She herself founded um, and is the managing director of Credit Data, which is an agency which does provide this kind of information. She came into conflict with a number of quarters purely because at the time, some lending institutions, including the financial sector and the banking sector, were reluctant to give out this information because they said it was confidential. Um, and that's the whole point, isn't it? The irony is... Um, mm -hmm. The reason why you need to give that information is because it's sensitive and you need to know your customer, you need to know your consumer. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the banks at the time, when you were um, going uh, or at loggerheads with them, they were saying that's confidential, they can't give you that information. But it, was, it wasn't their interest, right? Yes. Now, um, tell me, what necessitated this, um, this need to actually go to court um, with institutions like, for example, the Bankers Association of Malawi, you sued them. You also sued um, the Reserve Bank of Malawi, then government, Governor Charles <laughs> Chuka. What, 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 what was with the propensity to sue and why? <laughs> Let's start with institution by institution. Why did you sue the Bankers Association? Well, um, like I said, the act was passed in 2010. Okay, mm -hmm. and in the act it said a credit reference bureau may collect credit information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, when we looked at the act, it gave us the mandate to go and collect the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, cr the act says may. Mm -hmm. When I use my may to come and collect the information, you shall mm -hmm. give me the information, right? Mm -hmm. But now the bank started saying, no, it's a may, it's not a shall. So I'm saying, listen, why are you going out of your law and you're coming in our credit reference bureau act and say mm -hmm. there is a may, right? So but then we wait a minute, Patricia. On that, but, but, yeah. but, but, but then that sounds like a, a perfect, perfectly logical argument. If they're saying it wasn't mandatory because of the language that was used, they mm -hmm. had merit, did they not? We could say that. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to go to court. 
That's why so you went to court. court were, were you yeah. going to court to to mm -hmm. to prove that they were wrong to mm -hmm. do so, or were you going to court to uh, to address the issue of the language that was used? It was about the language that was used. Okay. Yeah, to say uh, this may does this may give us the mandate to. To, to, to for them to now to say shall, okay, mm -hmm. because when it's a may on my part, mm -hmm. I can choose to come to you mm -hmm. to collect the information. But okay? then I can also choose not to give it to you because you've used the word may. Where, where, where do you take that? The, mm. the, that the, I mean, that's where we had the, the argument, because mm. if the act says you may, okay, mm -hmm. but when I come to you, it says mm -hmm. shall, because I've used my may to mm. collect the information. And so that's what we, the, that was the ambiguity that was there. We, mm -hmm. tried, we wanted the courts to, 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 to give us a clear answer on that. Mm -hmm. That's why I, um, I had to take the bankers association to court uh, to, because we needed that clarification. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of the, the governor, the then governor, uh, we, he's so that was Charles Chuka. Then, yes, yes, that was Charles Chuka. He, he, he was, he, the governor, I mean, it was not personal, right? It, mm -hmm. it was the office, okay? Uh, according to the... But that's the other thing, though, Patricia, because mm -hmm. a lot of um, uh, sentiments were that you were taking this issue too personally at the time. No. Um, people felt that you, you had <laughs> such a strong... Uh, passion for this cause, and 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 some are wondering whether you were taking it perhaps a little bit too personally. No, it wasn't personal. It was the the, the institution. He is the registrar of the of, of financial institutions. There is a Financial Services Act. Actually, the Financial Services Act is the constitution in the financial services industry, mm -hmm. and the governor is by the wish of that office. He's mm -hmm. the registrar of financial institutions. Right. All right? Okay. Actually, you know, before I went to court. There was, there's been quite a lot of correspondence, letter writing, back and forth, you know, mm -hmm. and nothing was happening, mm -hmm. right? So, like I said, I am a bona fide Malawian. I've got the constitution right to exercise economic activity in mm -hmm. this country, mm -hmm. right? And the laws are for me to use them, okay? So, but when he didn't do what the law requires him to do, because the law says, as a registrar of financial institutions, if there is a problem within the financial institutions, because the Credit Defense Bureau is a financial institution, mm -hmm. we are registered by the Reserve Bank, so as the, the, by the banks, mm -hmm. okay? So, I, I, I wrote a letter to him. I actually even met him and explained the problems that we have, mm -hmm. right? So he needed to take a stance, but he chose to remain quiet, mm -hmm. yeah? So I said, no, 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 but the law requires you, requires this office, not you as a person, but this office to come in when there is a problem in the financial uh, industry, mm -hmm. yeah? So that's when I had to take, I mean, I had to go to court. And so say, effectively you were saying he was, mm -hmm. be he was being incompetent. That's what you were accusing I wouldn't say incompetent. No, no, not incompetent. <laughs> but then what else would you call it? Um, I thought he was... If um, you were saying he wasn't doing his job, then he mm -hmm. was effectively incompetent. Not exactly. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Is, um, in a family, a father's got this, maybe seven children, okay? And then the last child is complaining. Because the Credit Reference Bureau was like one of the financial institutions that came in late. Mm -hmm. You can't compare it with the banks. So the, the, the last child is complaining that my elder brothers are not giving me food. The father of the house is supposed to take a stance and find out what exactly is happening, all right? Mm -hmm. And make a stance. But now, him as a father, that office as a father didn't want to take an action. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in this case, in our setting, I think you can go and talk to your uncle, mm -hmm. who is, who's got the, the authority to, to also to, to, um, to sort out issues in a family, right? Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I did. I, that's when we, we, I, I, mean, I had to take, I mean, I had to go to court to say, listen, we need So you took the Bankers Association and the governor of the Reserve Bank of Malawi at the time to court <laughs> in succession. We because started you obviously started with the Bankers Association, No, right? no, no. We started with the Registrar of Financial Institutions. The Registrar, okay. Mm, mm, mm. And, then, and then the Governor? No, the Registrar, the, that, like, that's what I said. Mm. Uh, it was not personal. It was the office, okay? So mm -hmm. the, the, the Governor was the Registrar of Financial Institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I took the, the Registrar of Financial Institutions to court. And then the Bankers Association. Yes, but yeah. So when we took the, 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 the Governor to the, to the to courts, um, the other lawyers came in and said, listen, I think you are suing a wrong party, okay? The people that are, do not want to comply with the act at uh, is the Bankers Association, mm -hmm. right? So why don't you take the Bankers Association to court? So that's when we took the Bankers Association to court to say, we need a clarification. It was all about, can you clarify here? Mm -hmm. Can you courts clarify? Okay. Uh, the courts are there to interpret the law. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's their duty. Right. Yeah, sure. So what happened in the end? Um, where are you with these issues? I mean, you've mm -hmm. done a lot of suing and you've been you've <laughs> done a lot of uh, back and forth movement yeah. between, you know, in, into courts, etc., etc. Yeah. But have you actually yielded anything? What 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 happened? Oh, yeah, you sure. win any of your cases, Patricia? <laughs> well, um the the one with the registrar we we, we lost both, okay? Mm -hmm. The we the one with the registrar, it was on a technicality because um 
the 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 our the my legal counsel or what what is in the in the in the as an applicant is a credit data credit reference bureau mm -hmm. when the actual our name is credit data crb Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. So it, we lost on the on those th on those technicalities. Right. But then the second with Bankers Association, we we lo we, we lost it as well. Um, uh, I ha I have to be honest. I haven't read the judgment because you no, know, it changed really? things. Yes, because mm -hmm. things had changed. Mm -hmm. um, when the president came in, because remember what I told you, mm -hmm. it was his idea to say Mara should have credit reference bureaus. So when he came in now as a president of this country, he said the credit reference bureaus are not uh, are not operational. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? They say they they say they are they are arguing about a May and what have you. So he he directed that let just go back to Parliament and amend and put a shell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. In 2015, that's why the, the amendment happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when the 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 what the judgment was coming out, the things had already changed. Actually, by then we had very good relationships with the Bankers Association and so everybody. You know, we had started now using the amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, it was more academic mm -hmm. because, to be honest, it, the issue had already been sorted out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was. So did it ever make you think that perhaps um, you were Base, uh, perhaps in too deep um, and maybe to sort of uh, dampen your spirit to continue to fight for this cause, the fact that you kept going to court but you kept losing. Did you ever feel that perhaps maybe you were on the wrong part? No, no, never. Not even Do you still this. stand by what you, the principles that you believed in at the time when you were taking yes. these institutions to court? Do you exactly. still stand by that? Exactly. Actually, that's the whole reason why then the, 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 the amendment happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, I still believe that. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Mm. Now, in terms of where we are, um, mm. I asked you this before we went to break. Mm -hmm. You've now, obviously, we now have the credit reference agency. So, can we uh, s s safely say you're fully functional? Very. At the moment. Very. Okay. Very. Um, very. Is it making a difference, I wonder? Is mm. it actually making a difference to the economy? It, exactly. Mm. Like I've already said, uh, in terms of Malawi as a country, we've moved uh, on the doing business rankings. Mm -hmm. because, uh, the so you would, you would attribute that to the credit records? Yes, yes. Bureau? I mean, yeah, even if you check in the doing business 2018 report that the World Bank has produced, mm -hmm. see that well, which, which other aspect has contributed to the, to the movement. Mm -hmm. It's a, in act, uh, I mean, the being operation of the credit defense bureaus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when mm -hmm. we look at borrowing um, in isolation, for example, mm -hmm. just, just borrowing, mm -hmm. um, ha I mean, interest rates are down, etc., mm -hmm. etc. So it seems like things are sort of relatively settling. Mm -hmm. um, has that actually had an impact? Has borrowing itself improved when we think of borrowing? No. Honest, I have to be honest. Uh, f from the records that we have, borrowing has not improved. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. that's what you wanted, isn't yeah, exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, fortunately, uh, the now governor the, of the Reserve Bank of Malawi, he's passionate to make sure that uh, the, the the credit in, uh, industry is thriving. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I mean, I had a meeting with him, and he, he attributed the same. He wants mm -hmm. to. He wants. To be to have a vibrant credit uh, transaction economy, um, mm -hmm. so we are hoping if all his plans uh, come to pass, mm -hmm. we are definitely going to to, to be somewhere. Correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. um, if, from where I'm sitting, it sounds like you're drawing parallels between the current governor mm -hmm. of the Reserve Bank of Malawi, Dai Tukabambi, and the previous um, <laughs> governor, Charles Chuka. Um, what are you implying? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Um, what, well, are you are you are you <laughs> suggesting that somehow Daito Kabamba is a better governor on that front than Governor Charles Chuka or the former governor? Uh, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not comparing, but I'm looking. But at you seem to be speaking very highly of Daito Kabamba yeah, in that sure. respect. But you weren't exactly. speaking that highly of, of Charles. Chuka. Of course, because the, the, the then governor didn't. I mean, didn't assist in these issues. Mm -hmm. But this governor. Mm -hmm. He is making sure that wh where are the problems? We are able to sit down and say, where can we? Where where are the problems? And where can we iron out? We want to see these things moving on, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got a passion. I think that's what I can say. He's got a passion. He, I, you can actually see that he has got the passion to make sure that things are moving. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of these, uh, that was going to be my next question actually. What are the challenges that you're facing now? Obviously, you are now established. Um, things are moving. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you're encountering, or where can we make improvements since this enactment? Mm -hmm. um, given mm -hmm. the, uh, the the economy that we're dealing with, given the financial constraints that we have, I mean, I think you've been following the parliamentary sessions mm -hmm. and how uh, f you know Minister of Finance Guru Gondwe has come under fire mm -hmm. um, because you know things just aren't going well. Mm -hmm. Given all that information, um, where do you think we c we could still make improvements? 
Well, um, in terms of when we think about credit. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think there's quite a lot that we can do to, to, to make improvements. First and foremost, I think it's also, you've, you've um, I mean, repeatedly talked about information knowledge, yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. I think we, Malawians need to know to under, and appreciate what a credit reference bureau is and how beneficial it is to the, to the economy. That's one. But also, um, um, it's, it saddens me quite a lot to see that the private sector, which is supposedly to be the drivers of economy, mm -hmm. okay, they're not embracing the credit reference bureau Okay. Operations. What do you mean by that? Yeah, well, they. you say they're not embracing it, how do you, what do you mean? Uh, they're not submitting data, they're not even using data, you know, uh, and the, the, the private. And you've got evidence to that effect? Yes, I, I, I run a credit reference bureau. Mm. We receive the information. Mm -hmm. We've received quite a lot of information. Banks are submitting the data, mm. financial institutions are submitting the data, but not the financial, the, not the private sector. Mm -hmm. And also, you don't see a private. A, so, a, wait a minute, when <laughs> we think about private sector in terms of lending, what, what kind of institutions are we talking about here? Traders, manufacturers, mm -hmm. okay, here, here we are, if, if a trader say, I will accept you to, to get your, I, I mean, your, to purchase from me on credit, All right, that's embracing credit, mm. okay, now, but uh, because I think the private sector is more to do with the cash, it's cash, cash, mm -hmm. cash based, you know, uh, I, that is what is also uh, stifling this initiative, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, uh, you can't just leave it to the banks. The mm -hmm. banks are lending money that they, 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 the people have deposited in, 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 in their banks, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Does so, the, the mm -hmm. private sector have an obligation to do that, though? Are they, no. Is they, no. So that's the, that's the it challenge, It has to be an it? embracement, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge, yeah. It's so a, you, so we can't really blame them for doing that, can we? There's nothing that's making it mandatory for them to do so. No, it's, it's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. It's not mandatory. But then it, they have to embrace that. Mm -hmm. They have to embrace that. I think if you, if you listen to the private sector is complaining. We're not getting, we not getting what, contracts, mm -hmm. yeah? It's only the big institutions that are getting contracts. Mm. And there was a word, I think, I think from, 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 from government to say, listen, if you're credit worth, you'll be able to go to the bank and borrow and then get the, the big contracts mm -hmm. but because we don't know who you are mm -hmm. yeah yeah sure mm -hmm. so the, the private sector should embrace the credit reference bureau should embrace the credit culture mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah I mean uh, ways I'll tell you um, the credit where and in, in countries where credit the private sector embraces credit mm -hmm. they are high, I mean they, they are well I mean advanced yeah, than us right. we are we are losing we've been complaining about brain drain mm -hmm. right labor people are going to those countries because just with a credit card, mm -hmm. you can walk in in a shop, right, mm -hmm. and get whatever you want. Yeah. But okay. Mm. But then um, I think the only the other reason why things like that work, perhaps in the other parts of the world, Patricia, is um, I don't know how we're doing it here, but I know, for example, in other parts, mm -hmm. they use your address is critical to your credit, mm -hmm. where you live. Mm. is critical so and that is how they identify who you are so it's not just about your name so mm -hmm. you give your name you mm -hmm. give your address and that is all information that will be held so for as long as that comes up that address pops up mm -hmm. it'll be associated with a particular name who had either good credit or mm. bad credit yeah sure now some might, uh, might might want to know how are you doing what information are you using here well how are you doing it here? it's difficult to track somebody without knowing fully who they are. Someone can change their name and you never know what their credit was. <laughs> yeah, true. I think that has been quite a lot, like almost the, it was almost like a song for the, for the, for the, for the years that we've been, I mean, we've been doing the credit reference bureau because of lack of identification. But let's be honest, let's, I mean, it's not like Malawi completely didn't have any form of identification. Mm -hmm. We've got pass. we used to have passports, we used mm -hmm. to have driver's license. But we're talking about, but we're, now, we're talking about digitized information because with, like I said, other parts of the world, mm -hmm. your, your address is put onto a system and it'll be there. It's, everything is there. It's digital. Sure. Yeah. Even now, in this case, mm -hmm. um, what are you using other than a name? What else no, do no, you no. have to work No, with? We, 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 we use the, the, the legal identification uh, uh, documents in Malawi mm. before the national ID mm -hmm. was the road traffic, the passport, and the make registration. Right. So we've been using that. Mm -hmm. okay? And I've talked, I've talked to you about that the, the Credit Reference Bureau has actually has, has had an, an impact. Mm -hmm. It was based on those issues. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, as much as we talk about the addresses and everything, mm. but the, as long as there's a legal document that you can use as an identification, right, uh, mm -hmm. for you to transact on credit, you are good to go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other challenges? Because we were on talking about the challenges that we, we, you're facing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other challenges uh, um, I've mentioned about the, the knowledge and the, also mm. the embracement of the Credit Defense Bureau. Yeah, I think mainly those are the main challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So going forward, Patricia, what do you see 
um, as a future of credit in Malawi. I mean, you've said that we haven't yet embraced credit scores because, um, again, in other parts of the world, or you, you can just go into a shop, mm -hmm. any shop, yeah. um, and say, I want to take, just to argument's sake, you mm -hmm. go into game mm -hmm. and say, I want to take this on credit and I'll pay in 12 months installments. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll just literally... Take in, type in your name, address, yes. and they'll get a credit score there and then mm -hmm. and know whether you're credit worthy or not. Exactly. Um, are you working towards that kind of, um, of a system where even the shops will then be linked to you and will be linked to financial institutions, et cetera, et cetera, and they will have that information there and then? Exactly. We've been to the private sector, uh, tried to sell the, this credit defense bureau thing, but uh, the, the response it has been nil completely non-existent, you know. So I think maybe it's the, either the Minister of Trade or the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. I think they really have to do a, a lot about this to make sure that they allow their their members or the, 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 the private sector to embrace the credit defense, I mean the credit defense kind of uh, way of doing business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And any regrets, um, given the, the fights you've had um, the the judgment, I'm sure you've been judged. Like I said, mm. a lot of people felt that you were taking this a little bit too personally, <laughs> that perhaps you were a bit, uh, behaving a bit like a, a dog with a bone who won't let, do let go of the bone. Um, and some just felt that perhaps you just enjoy the idea of suing and taking people to court. Um, what's your response to that? And, uh, and what, are, what, are, what are your beliefs now, having gone through all that yeah. um, to where you are today? Oh, well, uh, first of all, it's not like I enjoy suing. Okay, mm -hmm. but, but it uh, must be exhausting, Patricia. It is constantly it is. going to court. Exactly, and it's it's also time wasting. Honestly, it's also time wasting. But um, but you did it anyway. I did it anyway. I, I am a Malawian, and Malawi is the only country that I have. Okay, if I didn't do that, I would have been by now. I would have been my, in my, my village, uh, just sitting, or maybe in my in my house, just like a housewife, working, okay, not doing anything. I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. Um. I know uh, it, it, it left a bad taste in other people's mouths. But I think also it, it, it enlightened other, other quarters because I think other people started seeing what exactly is this all about, okay? And they started looking at the issues with a sober mind and say, okay, how can we move forward? Yeah, and I don't have any regrets. I have to be honest with you. I have to be, I, I don't have but any regrets. But you must regrets. have made enemies as well. No, I have to be honest. Uh, Maybe, maybe they, they've made enemies with me, mm -hmm. but I, don't, I didn't make any, any enemies with them. Um, I'll give you an example, like Bankers Association. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're we in very good terms right now, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the good thing that happened is uh, when the, act, the amendment happened, um, the, the Bankers Association had actually changed the presidents, okay? Mm -hmm. And the president that came in there, was she was very very passionate to make sure that credit reference bureaus are what are operational so we had a very good working relationship with the the, the then president of bankers association and then it just cascaded to you know to the to the new uh, president mm -hmm. of the bankers association so as as i'm talking now our relationship is very good right. i've already mentioned about the regulator we had a change of person in the office and this person is also very passionate to make sure that malawi grows I mean, the financial st there is financial stability. Actually, that's what he told me. All I right. want to see financial stability in Malawi. Yeah, right. yeah, sure. So, no, <laughs> things are Water good. off a duck's back. All <laughs> right. Patricia <laughs> Masse, thank you so much for joining us. Um, unfortunately, time's not on our side. We're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> but I'm afraid we are going to have to be back next week. A big thank you to Credit uh, Data Managing Director Patricia Masse for joining us today here on Times Exclusive. We will be back, of course, next week from me, Wesley Kasambal, and indeed the Times Exclusive team. Until next week, it's bye-bye. <laughs>